What is going on right now? Sorry for not paying attention to what you're saying. But no, it's all right. I'm used to press it. Press F5? <laughs> what the fuck do you mean press F5? You see me literally click on refresh. This is my first time catching a stream. I didn't know you guys were real. Yeah, we're fake. I just think body hair just makes people primal. Is it just like busted? What's happening? And I think I need to like embrace gray hair too. Yeah. I think age is beautiful. I need to start embracing it. Okay. Well, you know what I mean? I like how you're focused on a completely different thing than yeah, I Yeah, I'm focused on something very serious yeah. here, which is that, like, my Twitter is fucking broken. Yeah. And you're over here being, like, talking about some, some gay, gay shit. shit. Well, I want to talk politics because I got a lot of things to talk about. Down Detector seems to show it's not just for you. Okay, no meme today. Let's see if it blasts off. Oh, it did. It blasted off. It's just that tab that's fucked. It it works. I mean, it. I blasted it off here. I'll put. Po I'll post it for those of you who can see it. You can post it, and and show it. Need to calm down. But it is weird. Being too loud. Is Austin married? No. Be careful. You'll end up on that subreddit for some banter again. Oh yeah, that's true. Austin's here, so uh, we might get on LSF again if we just banter with one another. We uh -oh. need to be careful with our banter. To not be, to not tear each other down. Let's compliment one another. No, it's not even that. It's just like, oh no, God forbid you accidentally fucking uh, make a joke and then I respond to it. People will make inferences that we're, yeah. we hate one another. Ollie London, the right wing oh, grift. Man. Oh, I love that. This is my favorite fucking type of content. It's just an hour long though. It's oh crazy. my God. An hour long is like five Hassan hours. Yeah, it's true. Um, react to tomorrow's teaching with Austin. No, if I were to react to something with Austin, it'd probably be producer Michael and the Boeing shit. Oh my God. I mean, I don't look that bad, bald. bro. You look like a straight up white supremacist because well, I'm white. You, and bald. If I saw you like this <laughs> with the fucking goatee, I'd be like, oh my God, this dude literally is like hiling Hitler so hard. You can see like a Come muscular on, that, imbalance on his fucking right arm look versus that, the left. Look at the Gucci, the Gucci little chain though. Nobody's getting fooled by that. No, no one can see that it's a Gucci chain, and that doesn't change what I'm talking about at all. Mm -hmm. The vindication the of 20s. Australia's worst female serial killer. Love that. That's a great video. Yes, girl power. Put it in the fucking docket. <laughs> Fuck yes. Let's even it out, bro. This is automatic hate the crime. Disproportionate. You understand that, right? Like, this like one? no disrespect. Like this I is, would be doing the hate crime. This is an automatic hate crime like this is a hate crime that i posted this photo i was on my way to england remember when we went to england that was when i was on the way to england if you look like this in england they would have made you prime minister <laughs> like they would have been like that guy's the top racist mate yeah. fucking hell yeah, yeah, yeah he's the perfect type of racist Dude, speaking of delta because i see that i'm flying with delta i like got in like a pissing match with the person next to me they were like bragging about how much of a frequent flyer there were they were. And like we were having like a quiet little like frequent flyer off. She's like, Oh, I'm on a trip and then I'm gonna be here and then I'm gonna be here and then I'm gonna be here. And I'm like, oh, feel that, because I'm gonna be here, 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 and here, and then I'm switching airlines, which I have really high status with, and then I'm gonna go here, here, and here and here. We're putting a ban on you talking about airlines. Wait, who's we? Which is this this community is now officially declared an air frying, airline commentary free zone. Okay. You can only talk you about, just said about the Well, the Boeing one is like it's flight. I feel like airplanes are different than airlines. Um producer Michael had a video where he's like talks about a thirty million dollar like airplane or some shit. That's mm. what what is this? Mm. You can tell this is an actual fucking boomer that posted this because mm. honestly, if this was a Zoomer post, one, it would have had cap cut edits on it. And two, it would have featured Tanache Freak, which would have been better overall. Mm. It got like, like 10 million likes. Is somebody going to match my freak? Is somebody going to match my nasty? I've been a nasty girl. I've been a, I've been a nasty girl. Uh. A prominent NBA news aggregator citing the Blaze Glenbeck's insane nonsense website is a legitimate source of WNBA news. It's a great example of how there will be absolutely a YouTube-esque pipeline. I can't do it because my Twitter is busted. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, please, why does... Oh, fuck! I can't click on Twitter links. Stop sending me Twitter links. It's not working. Twitter links are not working. Look, send me fucking TikToks instead. Look, I, I can't believe I'm saying this. Show this to Austin. 
I can't wait for all the fan cams to cut me. Bro, out. You, oh, I've we've seen literally this. shown this to Austin last time I've he seen, was and here. And I'm wearing the same fucking. Oh, oh dude, my I got god, you are got, wearing the same. I got cooked. I got noticed somewhere, and they came up to me. And they're like, yeah, we weren't sure it was you, but then we pulled up a picture and you were wearing the same outfit. So guys, today is awesome. <laughs> oh, God. This is probably a... This is the... $150 you... million dollar Boeing business, Jess. You yeah. had me at $150 million, okay? Of course yeah. I'm going on that thing. Okay. Fuck yeah. Thoughts on Austin with this hair? No, no. Austin needs a buzz cut. Well, hey, go back to that. My dad actually has, has hair this like hair, that. Yeah. My dad has that hair. Yeah. My dad has hair like that. But it works on he's your... Got a, he's got a beard like it that. It works and on it's your gray. dad. It doesn't work on you. Look at this distinguished you. gentleman. And it's gray. Look at the way he is sitting. Yes, very distinguished. Mm. Yeah, my Lebanese dad has hair like that. Yeah. My dad looks famous. Oh, he doesn't dress up like a famous no, guy. No, he, he needs... If you, if, if you dressed him up, he would look famous. Yeah. I, I can see that. Is he bald? No, my dad's not bald. My dad's got long hair. My brothers are bald, though. Johnny CIA I'm, made a new I'm video. You're life. in it. Wait, I'm in a Johnny CIA video. Let's go. Clear cash and cookies. Wait, I'm actually in the video. Where's the Macy's with the fucking playlist? Oh, you know, you know, you know what I was in recently? What? What were you? In I recently? was queer of the week on Trisha Paytas's podcast. Oh hell yeah, good yeah. shit. I think I, I want to go on it. Okay. Who? 200k viewers matching your free. Oh. Okay, so. And what's up? Youngest Hasanabi NBA head. Who is it? LeBron James. LeBron James. Yeah. Huh. Is that LeBron James? Yeah. Yeah, she wishes, bro. Okay, let's be real. She wishes. Legal gambling ring. Did you know cover? that there was um an oh, illegal gambling this. operation going on just down the street from where you live? No. <laughs> what is it? I ain't heard nothing about that. <laughs> That's crazy. He yeah, that dude is the that dude is the fucking steak.com ceo right there um wait donald j trump and Shay have the same birthday really oh the macias did send a playlist i just didn't see it um we'll cover we'll we'll get into the news Yo. in a second let's start off with some cringe content israel related cringe content this is montana tucker she's israel's strongest warrior okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's see what she she literally october 7 happened and since then she's been like oh my god this is my fucking lane like uh. i am the I am the pro-Israel content creator, which is always funny to see because it's like, dude, that's like an atrocity. Imagine like, I mean, I guess I can't really talk shit because like I'm the 9-11 guy. <laughs> you you know what I mean? Like, like I I'm the 9-11 guy. She's yeah. the October 7 gal. You know what I mean? <laughs> you are the 9-11 guy. All right. Let's see what the fuck she's uh, doing this time. Nova Music Festival Grounds, May 2024. They just wanted to dance. Bro, this is so weird. Actually, now that I think about it, imagine like post 9-11, like, oh God. like a couple Don't months after 9-11, they're just literally fucking dancing on ground zero. Like that would be, people would be like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, Did we do shit like this in America? I wasn't here. I was dancing as well no, on we the did. rooftops no, of New no. Jersey while 9-11 was happening. Zing. But... No, remember Bush bravely got on top of the rubble and he said, I hear you. We hear you. Somebody, and they are going to hear from us very soon. And then we invaded Iraq. <laughs> well, that was, Iraq was after we first okay, Afghanistan. I know, I know, but that Iraq. was, I know. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is this, bro? This is so I, weird. I have to go pee. Oh, immediately. As soon as we talk about Israel, someone has to leave the room. You see that? Coward. southern Israel near Gaza there at 6 30 in the morning they heard bombings and then suddenly they were attacked. I feel like this is bait right like I feel like they I feel like they made this so that like someone like me would watch it and then like uh and, and then laugh and then they'd be like see he's laughing at October 7 kill him now like it, it's so it's just like it doesn't it betrays the sensitive nature of the topic that you are trying to discuss. Okay. Like it, it literally, it literally immediately works to soften the impact of the message that you're trying to put forward. The message you're trying to put forward in this situation is like, 
this was a massive tragedy, right? Like, this was a massive tragedy. Like, I can't believe they fucking paraglided over this, like, like uh, over this, this music festival and they killed a bunch of people. And it is like a tragic circumstance overall. It is a tragedy, right? But when you do this, especially so close to the events that unfolded, it's like, there is no fucking way I can take this seriously. I'm sorry. This is like, everybody mourns in their own way, right? Everybody mourns in their own way. But like, sometimes I guess people mourn in a very funny way. You know what I mean? Where it's just like, the fuck are we doing? Like, imagine one of your, imagine your dad dies, okay? Imagine your dad dies, and at the funeral, you play like a fart compilation. And you, and you expect people to be like, you have to take this seriously. My dad loved to fart. My dead dad loved farts, and he took them very seriously. Like, you, you were going to laugh in that situation. There's no way. Like, there's no way you are not going to laugh at that situation. It's impossible. What the fuck? <laughs> go fart. Go pee again, Austin. He doesn't, you don't want to be in this clip? My grandfather. Wait, nobody called you a Zionist. Nobody called you a Zionist. My grandfather has been fighting for the rights of Palestinians. My family has been since before you were even a fucking thought. When you were swimming around as a sperm in your dad's fucking testicles. Okay. You were muted. <laughs> well, I said my grandfather has been fighting for the rights of Palestinians, dedicated his life, later retired life, to fighting for the rights of Palestinians since the fucking 80s. All it's right? true. All right. So my family's been involved in fighting for the rights of Palestinians for a long fucking time. Okay. I don't since know. Since you were a fucking sperm in your dad's testicles. I mean, since technically you were a sperm in your dad's testicles. Yeah, but your my, grandfather. That's, that's irrelevant. Okay. Since I was before uh, I was even born. All right, all, right, all right. Stop getting serious for no reason. This is yeah. like this is supposed to be serious, but it's like ridiculous uh, overall. By militants. If I'm one of the hostage families, I'm suing. Yeah. Suing for cringe. Four of the 384 victims are members of the Lilac Friedman Dance Center. Their fellow dance members decided to return the site of their friend's murder to honor them. Dude, comp. That makes it. Oh my God. We can dance in the oceans. We can dance on the walls. We can dance in slow motion. We can dance till we. Bro, that's a released hostage. Are you serious? That's. That is crazy, bro. That is fucking crazy. Oh my. God. We have to investigate the collective conscious, the collective psyche. This is the least all right thing I've ever seen in my life. What the fuck? What the fuck? Bro, how did people in Israel see the David get up? MLK remix during BLM during the George Floyd protest and went this is the perfect way of doing a protest this is how we get the world to hear us like is that what they they saw the shout out to his family bit and were like that's my shit this is now my personality it's the only fucking it's the only form of activism that I will engage in like yeah they, they saw this shit and were like that's this so record. sick is in honor of George Floyd. And I really hope we can see more unity and more peace when already things are so difficult. So, shout out to his family. It's like to say, it's not the actual no, song, the, is the, it? No, the beat drops to something different, but okay. like, it's, it's basically been erased from our collective conscious because everybody knows this video now. Mm. But, but even then, it's like, like even if it was a even if it was a different fucking beat, which it was, it's still so insane. Like when I saw that, I was like, "That is, that is so crazy." What the fuck? This is arguably more respectful than what the Israelis did. Yeah, like what is happening here? How are you? How do you like? How are you someone who was held captive for like months, okay? Ducking and dodging Israeli bombs. And you come back to Israel and you're like, it's time to fucking go back to the site of this massacre and dance. There is no world in which there is no circumstance where, where like this can ever be replicated. They're just so good at propaganda. No, they're not. They're so bad at it. That's my point. Like when I... I mean, obviously, I'm not exactly sympathetic to uh, uh, Zionism as a cause uh, or Israel as a nation state. 
for all of its many different war crimes throughout the past 76 years of brutal occupation. So I'm not exactly going to look at this and be like, well, my mind has changed. But I think like if I'm a liberal who hasn't really investigated what the fuck's going on in Israel and like saw the atrocities and saw that play and unfold, thought that even like if I was one of these liberals that like thought, oh, yeah, you know, Hamas started this war. Why did they start this? Like, that's really fucked up on them. If I watch the video, I'd be like, this is there's something spiritually wrong about this. You know what I mean? Like, think about it. Think about it. It's literally, it, it is straight up like dancing after 9-11, like a couple months after 9-11, going to ground zero and doing a techno dance where you reenact like falling is out of like buildings. like the Democrats took a knee in Congress? It, but like worse <laughs> with the whatever they, what remember they put something around their, what was it? When they all, uh, the can take log. Yeah. He had to put the trash can under me. <laughs> Go a day without talking about Israel challenge, impossible difficulty. Yeah, man, I'm sorry that there's fucking nine months of ethnic cleansing happening and it's uh, kind of newsworthy. At least this is not as like gruesome and as atrocious as the regular news coverage. Oh, that can we watch? Can we look at this? Mike Mayak? Yeah, maniac. Yeah, we're going to look at that in a second. Let me finish this. We fall. We can dance with the stranger. We can dance with our friends. We can dance in our minds when the music never ends. Bro, it's like, yeah, it's like if Nancy Pelosi, well, not Nancy Pelosi, but like, it's like if people were doing dance reenactments of like George Floyd's murder, okay, during the Black Lives Matter protests, if they were just like getting together and like, and like reenacting the, the execution of George Floyd, you know what I mean? To like techno music. Ends, nothing will stop us ever again. As long as we got music, the night will never end. We can dance again. <laughs> What is going on, bro? See, apparently they did do that. I can't breathe. The tribute to George Floyd. Yeah, see, the difference is this is from a year ago or from two years ago, not immediately after, and it has 800 views. It's not like something that, like a, like a major propagandist for the nation state that is currently engaging in an ethnic cleansing campaign put together. Like, you, you, you had to search far and wide to find something that is an example. And even then, it's like, it's super cringe regardless. But it's like, even then, it doesn't meet this same fucking... It's like going to where George Floyd was executed and dancing. Jesus Christ, dude. I'm so sorry. That was so gross. I'm so sorry. What? Did you burp? Yes. Why are you apologizing? I burp in the microphone all I know, day. But that was just so disgusting. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. Anyway. Wait till you f find out that I... Never mind. Y'all don't act like y'all aren't burping. If you don't know what happened at Nova Festival, look up Nova Festival film by Dan Pierre. Production, Kabara Films, Choreography Dances, Lilac Freeman Dance Center, Nova Survivors. If I hear about Nova, if I read about Nova, if I see it, I will never stop crying. The videos of them trying to save their lives and running for their lives. It will never be erased. We will dance once again. Hassan, can we watch this fucking Trump thing? It's not even a watchable thing. It's just like Micah and Logan had Donald Trump on. Okay, and here's what Mike's thoughts were Can I tell on you something meeting that Trump. Scared me. What? I saw a video of Trump like going at Logan Paul, and then they like hugged, and Trump smiled, and it kills me because I'm informed. I'm an informed liberal. Okay, uh -huh. and I know I'm never voting for Trump, but you know what killed me is I was like, I had a moment where I was like, oh, and that I knew that this moment that he did captured a lot of the young vote he had aura like dude he looked too, he looked too relatable my dude my twitter is just not like working. He, he maybe on he, that's this this right here this yeah. i saw this wait we know bro that's no. why we posted but it see, like, look at him, no. <laughs> he may have just won the election on that alone no he's not gonna fucking win the election on this i'm just saying that moment was a was a relatable moment because I kind of liked him in that moment. I kind of liked him, but I'm not going to vote for him. Never would. Um, anyway, here's what Mike said about meeting Trump. I haven't read this yet. So I'm sure this community is going to have a lot of thoughts because they were fucking shitting on Mike yesterday. One, after being all over anti-Trump to neutral to whatever, it was nice to finally meet him. We live in a world of headlines and misconceptions. It was fun to put those to rest. His aura is refined. 
Oh, Mike. No, this is the problem. And he commands the room. He's also predictably much more relaxed and more fun in off-camera settings. No, I After know, working dude. hospitality his whole life, he's extremely accommodating and gives times to each person in the room individually. Yeah, because he's charismatic. That's it the would thing. Have been, I know. That's I, the problem. I, no, I, and, I know that. Voters vote based on charisma. I know that. Right? I know that. That's, That's what I'm saying. That's why I love Obama so much. <laughs> it's because he's charismatic. Yeah. Right? He could be... Um, each person in the room individually, it would have been easy for him to talk only to Logan off camera, but he showed me equal love the whole time. His networking acumen and his room work is flawless. He also made sure we ate and his chefs made his coconut shrimp nine out of 10 after the show. Trump and his team are finally leaning into neutrality messaging for 2024, which a ton of moderates had prayed for less fiery rhetoric. The Trump campaign's goal is to convince fan sitters. He is likable while Biden's team has to prove that he's coherent. Trump simply put has the easier goal. I disagree with that. Uh, I, I, I do agree that like Trump won in 2016 because he came across as more moderate than the average Republican while simultaneously being infinitely more unhinged on issues like immigration and saying the quiet part out loud. A lot of people don't recognize this, and that is a correct analysis, except we're not in 2016 anymore. OK, we're not in 2016. And in 2020, he tried to literally fucking push the same boundaries and it didn't work because everybody was like, we know you're not a moderate big dog. You were the president. Now, obviously, four years since his presidency, people have short memories. They forget. But ultimately, ultimately, his rhetoric against Logan Paul and Mike was tempered in comparison to his rhetoric at his rallies. But we see his fucking rallies, his rallies where he talks about executing uh executing drug dealers we uh, we we hear the sentiment coming out of like how immigrants are poisoning the blood pool now the issue is mike doesn't know that you know why he doesn't know that because nobody's fucking paying attention to the news because this election <laughs> cycle absolutely sucks dog shit okay it sucks dog shit out of a goddamn straw um the normies don't see the rallies the media can't like set up a coherent narrative against Donald Trump. The media can't set up a coherent narrative where they defend Joe Biden. And that is terrifying because he, the, Mike is like a, a normie. He is a complete fucking normie. Obviously as a normie, when he meets Donald Trump, it's going to be very different. How normal can you be as you meet Donald Trump? But it's important why should the media pick sides? The media always picks sides. I'm not saying that like it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's usually a bad thing. But like, let's be for fucking real for a moment. Mike seems like a good guy, but he doesn't see the other side. Yes, when everybody's checked out of the uh, news cycle and they've made up their, their minds about Trump or made up their minds about Biden, which everyone has at this point, um, uh, at this point, ultimately, it's just like, it's a, uh, it's, Trump can get away with making it seem as though he is the more reasonable person in moments like the conversation that he had with impulsive. Whereas we know this is Trump's bread and butter shit like this. Yeah. He's really good. He's at this. very good. At, he's a media person. He's, he's a media really person. He knows how to fucking do uh, media hits like this. In the time we spent with him off camera, he was always smiling, had a positive, upbeat vibe. He clearly understands that lean with a smile is a charm worth mastering. People like happy people. Say what you want about Trump's policies. That's a personal opinion. I respect yours. I simply am thankful for his time and, he lo and the love he showed us. Our invite is still open for Biden. No shot, Biden goes. <laughs> Whatever meaning I have transcended politics, I don't care too much for picking sides at this juncture in life. Oh, God. oh my God. Trump is really nice and really cool, guys. He was nice to me. I don't think you guys are understanding how devastating this is in general. Yo, okay. guys, I'm not saying this isn't like this isn't like uh, me going like, fuck Mike, he should know better. I can have a conversation with Mike and describe to him how fucking damaging Trump's policies have been. But you have to remember, Mike is a representation of a lot of people that have completely checked out of politics in general. And the Democratic Party absolutely does a phenomenal fucking job. You guys have the expectation in a way that is not dissimilar to the Democrats and the Democratic Party loyalists, okay? Democratic Party loyalists for people not paying attention to the marginal differences between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, not realizing that the overwhelming majority of Americans do think like this. So this is a significantly larger problem overall for American politics, American political discourse. It's beyond the fact that, like, Mike has these opinions. He's... He's uh, someone who I can talk to directly and change his mind on shit. But what you never, 
what you never factor in is that most people are not watching a fucking dumbass Twitch streamer talk about the news every goddamn day of the week. Most people are completely checked out and they see the ha-has, okay? They see the, they see the goofs, they see the gaffes, they see Biden being old, and they sometimes see Trump having a funny moment. And that's fucking devastating. The other side of the conversation is that the Democrats have not even attempted to present their best foot forward. The Democrats have not even attempted to make a good argument as to why you should vote for the Democrats because they are resting on the laurels of just simply being the harm reduction party that you can vote for because they're significantly better on the issue of abortion. Okay, on the issue of abortion, Democrats are like, we won this. We got this. This is our thing. The, the Republicans fucked up. So for that reason, for that reason, paired up with the fact that uh, they are completely uninterested in making any sort of significant positive change and, and uh, pushing the envelope for progressive legislation, pushing policies in a positive direction and showing people that they're like, tangibly improving their material conditions in a way that they can see and and demonstrating why it's good to vote for them uh the democratic party is completely relying on the fact that they are not the party that stopped abortion okay and the person that is leading that cause is also currently conducting an ethnic cleansing campaign in the worst way that you could possibly do in an effort to win re-election re he's not only fucking doing an ethnic cleansing campaign which is like insane to begin with right uh allowing israel to bomb uh, gaza into oblivion but he's also simultaneously simultaneously doing it in the most like old man falling asleep at the wheel type way he possibly can constantly fucking uh, coming out with statements that he doesn't follow through on americans want like a strong leader right they want like a strong leader who is an elderly statesman. That's why they voted for Joe Biden. He's cooking his chances of being... No, I just want somebody who's not Trump. I know, but, like, Americans also... What is the quality I vote, of... I kid what is you the, not. What is I the would quality vote of, for a fucking tuna sandwich. Okay, okay, but listen, listen. What I is don't the, give a sh I'd rather have a tuna sandwich run the country than Trump. Okay. I really would. Brother, you have to understand something, though. What is the qualities of Trump that you hate the most? It's the chaos. It's the volatility. It's the instability. It is the corruption. It's the destruction of our institutions. You're sure, but like you have to also understand that like Joe Biden is literally also doing that when he says there's a red line in Rafa, and then people yes, yes, watch yes. fucking decapitated babies come out of like the footage no, on yes, the ground. No, absolutely. No, I I know. That, and 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 I so think, then I they think the Democrats are un also uh, not. Uh, they're fuck. What was I gonna say? God, Biden I'm not, I'm literally. Not a is doing a worse job God than it. Donald Trump. Cut me off before my thought could get through. Biden's doing a worse job than Donald Trump on showing that America, given the circumstances. They're not focusing enough on young people, and they're not listening to young people, and they're losing young people. And some interviews like this where Trump is going directly at that demographic, the Republicans see blood in the water, and they're going right for the fucking jugular. The Democrats are hemorrhaging young people, young yes. voters, because they don't believe. There is that too, that they for sure. They don't believe that. Their their cries for the things to uh, you know the the ceasefire in Israel and, and things like that they don't believe that to be as significant as it is and they believe that it, they think that at the end of the day these voters are just going to vote blue and give up but in reality I think a lot they're going to be surprised that a lot of these people are not going to vote um, yeah because or voting vote for the other side voting takes time it's annoying it's a nuisance in this country it's not simplified it's not easy it's not even on a fucking federal holiday. For obvious reasons. Um, that reason is voter suppression. That is an active voter suppression policy to not have compulsory voting, to not allow voting to occur uh, in the easiest way possible. That is by design. So the Democratic Party right now is already or has historically had this hurdle that they must clear. Felix Biederman has an opinion on this matter that I agree with. He thinks that the Democratic Party is now relying on the voter suppression instead of fixing the situation. Because when you look at the demographics of the suburban voters, the white educated voters that have historically been the foundational, the, 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 the bulwark of the Republican Party, all, white voters across the board, across every fucking spectrum, um, across every demographic, a lot of those white educated voters who are wealthy and will vote reliably are switching over to the Democratic Party. So this 
creates a unique predicament, a unique situation for the Democratic Party where they think, oh, yeah, we are now going to be the fucking party that takes advantage of voter suppression and lower vote turnout. Well, I think the Democrats don't understand that a lot of young people are jaded by the political process and they don't see change. And so there's almost like a sense of like rebellion amongst young people that are have like sort of like a scorched earth mentality that like, yeah, the other guy is worse, but fuck it. Sometimes you have to hit rock bottom before you actually get some change. And so that that's that, that that's why I feel like there's a the Democrats don't understand that there's a very large percentage of the their their voter base that just kind of wants to burn it to the ground. And they need to address those people or they will lose them. And and they and it's not good enough to just say the other guy is uh the other guy is worse. Yeah, that's not enough. Uh, it's not I, enough. Because I, this I, is this I, is look, the fundamental. Vote, you know how I vote. I vote blue down the ballot. I don't give a shit. This is the fundamental problem that the Democratic Party has that they just basically rely on people voting, lesser evil voting. And it is very frustrating because, like, they just completely cast aside the notion that, like, people are supposed to vote for something. You're supposed to win my vote. You're not supposed to take it for fucking granted and then complain when I don't vote for That's you. The other thing. In a country where the fucking yes. plurality historically doesn't vote. And, yeah. The plurality of the voter-eligible population does not vote for a multitude of different reasons. Obviously, one being the Electoral College because people think, like, oh, well... There's no popular vote. It doesn't fucking matter if I vote. If I'm in California, it's going to go blue. If I'm in uh, a state that is like deep red, if I'm in Missouri, it's going to go red. There's nothing changing that. Why the fuck should I vote? That's a, one of the major reasons as to why uh, the plurality doesn't vote. Um, that could change as well. We could make this process more democratic. Of course, no one is going to do it. Uh, Congress is constantly in a state of gridlock and neither party is actually it, interested in changing that process. The rhetoric, also the rhetoric that says that if you don't vote for Biden, you're, a, you're you are the problem. You are going to be the reason at which we uh, elect Donald Trump is only pushing that voter demographic further away and only pissing them off and only uh, pushing them further down into their rebellion and desire to say, fuck you. So, like, it's it doesn't work. That that method doesn't work. And I was talking to my, uh, you know, some older lib liberal people in my family. And, I, and again, I'm, I'm pretty liberal myself. But I was trying to explain that that rhetoric, because rhetoric, because the person in my family was, like, talking about how, like, man, if, if, if Trump wins, it's going to be because of these people. And I said, you have to understand something, that these are, whether you think that or not, that's not the way to approach this particular issue it's not going to work so yeah. like it's just not going to work it doesn't work the rhetoric doesn't work yeah and and it didn't work in 2016 which is precisely the reason why i thought the democratic party would like learn from that failure and nope boy did they not learn from that failure because they rely on not learning from that failure that is how the modern democratic party operates if they were to take a deep breath and reassess then obviously they would have to change things. And if they change things and they would no longer be the fucking, uh, the other side of the corporate oligarch coin, the <laughs> corporate oligarch backed, uh, you know, controlled opposition party that they are. And if they were to fucking, um, they would no longer be able to get like mainstream media support in the way that they do. They would no longer be able to get the donors that they need to, to win, uh, to, to win elections because money, is obviously uh, the most important part of this process. The side that has more money backing them almost always wins, like 98% of elections um, since uh, the Citizens United decision. Side with more money wins, always and forever. That's how it is. That's how George, That's how Latimer in, in, uh, in, in Jamal Bowman's district is currently defeating Jamal Bowman. Why? Because... Tons of money, millions, tens of millions of dollars have been dumped in this fucking primary by APAC and APAC subsidiaries for Jamal Bowman's, uh, I guess, crime for being honest about something that the overwhelming majority of Americans also recognize, which is that Israel is doing really fucking violent shit in Gaza and it has to be put an end to. You know, the other thing that Democrats obviously need dramatic policy shift, but you know what else we need? We need somebody fucking cool. I'm sick and tired. Like, why Democrats are always so fucking lame? Like, why can't we have some fucking cool people 
running for as Democrats. They're just lame asses, like dorks. We need cool ass people like Gavin fucking Newsom. Gavin Newsom's I'm not just cool kidding. either. But, but 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 we need cool Democrats. Policy I, shift and cool Democrats. All right, like cool ass, like swagged out, like you know somebody like Obama, right? We need somebody with charisma to run for the Democratic ticket. All right, that's what we need, right? Or that 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 one guy from Chicago, uh, Illinois, the governor of Illinois, Pritzker, 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 somebody like dope. that, somebody that's lovable, JB Pritzker, right? Something like that. We need to run for the Democratic Party. It needs. We need life. This looks amazing. I wish it was real, but it's not. They wouldn't go. They wouldn't do something so bold and brave. Um, yeah, it would be nice if there was someone under the age of seventy too, but like not someone lame as fuck like Pete Buttigieg. No, no. Look, I love Pete Buttigieg. I know it's Pride Month. Why do you love Pete Buttigieg? Because he's gay. I love gay people. And oh, man. it's Pride Month. No, fuck and that. And I'm sorry, Pete, but he just he doesn't have a lot of charisma. No, he is a fucking wet blanket, dude. That's what I'm saying. He just sucks. Right? Being a being Reddit trench fighter, it's clear the only strategy offered to DNC shills is I guess you don't care about minorities. If you don't vote, then why would they cater to you? They don't realize the way of talking is pushing people further away. <laughs> no, it's it's really funny because you want to know something really sad. Normally, one of the introductory basic things that a campaign is supposed to do is give talking points to their grassroots operators to the people who are fighting in the trenches and the biden campaign hasn't even done that this time around that is what is so fucking Wait, crazy they were, they're not fighting in the trenches no, no. There are people that are trying to I fucking. Been, I haven't been invited are, to phone bank yet. There are, which is shocking. No, that's what I mean. There, bro, brother. I haven't been. I haven't. No, been asked you don't understand. Phone bank. They are not even giving adequate talking points to for the for the people who want to genuinely defend the Democratic Party in this upcoming election. That's what's crazy. They don't have fucking policy on their <laughs> websites. They have no talking points. How the fuck? How the fuck are they? How? What are you doing? Like, that is such a clear indication that the entire wonk apparatus is just completely freestyling. They're just, they're asleep on the wheel. They're drunk driving and asleep on the wheel at the same fucking time. Look at this. JoeBiden.com. Where are the issues? Oh, it's non-existent. They just are asking for you to donate. That's it. Shut the fuck up and give us your money. How insane. The fact that Trump looks like a good guy on TikTok is insane. That's the problem. See what I mean? I, I tell you what, Hassan, don't underestimate this particular clip. No, I'm because not. I know, I'm not underestimating I it. It does pe things to people. The way Trump looks, he looks relatable. He looks personable. It's bad. It's bad. It's very bad. Because a lot of people, that's the only thing you've seen of Trump. He's hugging. It's cute. You know what I mean? 115 million views. It's it, like, that's not good. Gen Z influencers who supported Biden in 2020 turn against them. The Gaza war, the lack of progress on climate change, the potential TikTok ban are spawning anti-Biden content even among former supporters. Yep. <laughs> it's crazy. I've noticed that there have been a lot more events with creators, but the creators that are getting invited are the creators who are very pro-Biden and just parroting talking points and sharing photo ops with them, smiling with the president, not the creators who have been critical, said Khalil Green, a history content creator and edu education advocate in Washington, who said he hasn't been invited to the White House since he criticized the administration over the TikTok ban and the war in Gaza. Annie Wu Henry, a political influencer and digital strategist who worked on Democratic campaigns, agreed. While the White House once treated creators as independent media, she said, they now seem to be playing favorites. Biden's team is trying to say that they're handling influencers like the press. But the thing is, the press briefing room has to have Fox News no matter what. They have to allow all the media in, Henry said. When it comes to influencers, they're only letting people who agree. And anyone who gives even a little bit of pushback is not welcome. I've never been invited to, uh, invited to the White House. Never. I haven't, but I'm looking for my invite. I'm one of the fucking largest independent content creators in the political sphere, if not the literal largest. Never been invited, not even fucking once. Okay? I don't even have that expectation. Uh, Hassan I've would go never... to the you would go to the White House if you got invited. I would, but... Um, it would probably be a little bit more contentious, but no, but like, think about it. Think about it. Obviously it's not going to happen. I've never even had the expectation. Fauci came on this platform a while back to talk about vaccines. I'm an advocate for vaccines. I've been a fucking ride or die advocate for vaccines. Fauci, uh, uh told the Twitch team fake Fauci or not Fauci, but like his team, the white house communications mm -hmm. at the time.
under the Biden administration at this point, mm-hmm. literally fucking personally were like, no, we're, we don't want to we don't want to work with him. Mm-hmm. That's shocking, but, you know, even on issues that I'm like 100% aligned with the White House on, and there are some, it's rare, but there are some, even then it's like, nah, you say the 9-11 thing, they ain't inviting you, big dog, bro, we're talking about like, if they were to treat influencers like the media, okay, if they were to treat influencers like the media, it wouldn't matter what the fuck I've said, are you kidding me, they have Fox News on there. Fox News is just entertainment television for me. I'll tune into Fox News just when I want to be That's entertained. That's so funny. How fucking insane they are. Anyway. Mm-hmm. So, um, I was recently on a call with a DNC staffer that worked on the Bernie campaign and things like housing, student loans, public transportation, etc. are completely absent from the party platform. To the point that bringing up those topics is like the first time someone had these thoughts. Yeah. Remember, I did work with fucking DNC staffers back in the day in the Warnock campaign. Oh, I yeah. worked with them. I work with them. I set him up with Austin. Wait, because, you did? That was yeah, you? Yeah, that was me, what? motherfucker. When you, you didn't did, tell me that. When you did that you got stream. Me that? Yeah, I streamed with fucking Warnock. And, yeah, uh, I did that. Uh, Tom, I, I, whatever. I set the, that what up. was his name? What was the other one? Yes, I'm the one who set that up. You behind, didn't tell me that? I don't remember. I, Fuck, you matter. gave me that? That's so sweet of you. It's like, anyway, uh, regardless, just, uh, thank the, you my so point much. is, I met I knew, US senators because I knew of you. at the time, I knew at the time. They didn't that, give a shit about me, though. No, they I, literally, the way, they literally I tried to were talk like, to them. they didn't get yeah, I know nobody fuck. watched that shit because I wanted to do it with AOC and myself and a bunch of other content creators. And they literally were like, we can't have AOC and we can't have you. They straight up told me. I was like, fine, it doesn't matter. I still want to help you guys out. It's not going to be as good. Yeah. Did you set me up on that pro choice rally <laughs> or pro life rally? <laughs> What? Yeah, that's what I did that too. Is that one that you turned down and you're like, oh, my good buddy Austin Show will stream it? Yeah. So that's something to also remember. So, like, I have in the past worked with these guys, but it doesn't even fucking uh, matter. Yeah, it was with the runoff, with the runoff uh, campaign. You famously said that he wouldn't win that. I predicted that he would, and what? I was correct. No, I didn't. You thought that Warnock, you thought one of them would lose. I knew they were going to take control of the Senate. And I, I don't, predicted it. I don't recall that at all. I'm two for two. I, I on think you're, I, I feel like you're just now making up new uh, shit. Hold on, question though. Real, real question about elections right now. Aren't, are Democrats performing pretty well in local elections, small elections right now? What? Never mind. Wait, say it again. Ask the question again. Uh, like, are, no, they're not. Okay. What is the question? Yes, no. Are Democrats performing well in elections right now yes, across the country? They are. Okay. It depends, but they are outperforming <laughs> Biden by incredible margins, which is insane, in the same fucking down-ballot races that they appear on, which is unheard of. You're supposed to have the leader that people rally around, and then they vote down-ballot, not vice, not <laughs> the opposite. voting up-ballot? <laughs> yes, bro, yes. You look at battleground states, you look at battleground states with their, their senatorial races, yeah. and the Senate races are going to the Democrats by like 10 points, and Biden is losing in those uh, races against Donald Trump in those same states. Yeah. It's crazy. No, I've been watching the polls like a hawk. CNN running interference on this video on screen, really? What is it? CNN, media outlets used deceptively edited video to claim Biden wandered off at G7 this, summit. This, this is what I'm saying. They they didn't zoom out. I knew this from the beginning. I fell Wait, for what? the Biden it's poop still, one. Wait, what do you mean? This still looks weird, though. I know, but if, if you zoom out the frame. Here. <laughs> what What is the, what? He's looking at this one random guy, and everyone's like, come on, it's, come on, no, old no, man. But, uh, but uh, hold on. I think there's something more to the story. Okay. We literally watched this and laughed about it on the fucking Fear and know, Podcast. It's going to come out on Monday. I know, you never and know. Your I don't know. statements I'm are going to be heard. I'm just trying to get invited to the White what, House. Wait, what happened to the fucking fundraiser dinner that you were going to go to? Oh, I'm not going. Wait, why? Uh, I can't. I had some, a family emergency. I, I'm so mad at you. It's not a fundraiser dinner, by the way. It is a fundraiser dinner. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's the not. George Clooney one was a fundraiser. It's dinner. not a dinner. It's like in a stadium. Or, well, it's still a fundraiser. I'm going to be in a nosebleed seat. That's why you didn't want to go. No, it has nothing to do That's, with it. I you're a such a bitch. No, no, I had a family emergency. <laughs> yeah, okay. I did. I did. It's very tragic. He was supposed to go to the George Clooney fundraiser that Brandon is uh, putting together. He was invited to it, and he refused to go. No, that's not true. I did not refuse to go. I'm very excited. And to the, to the campaign, I want to let you know that I'm open, and I will fly to the next one. Okay, bro. God, he's so fucking old. It's crazy. I think he looks young. <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> shut up. I think he looks vibrant. President Biden appeared to wander off at the G7 summit in Italy. This video has been cropped. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess they don't show the other fucking person, uh, the other person with the parachute. It's still, it's still goofy as fuck. I've seen the fucking OG video. I still thought it was goofy as hell. The fuck? You know what? I think the I didn't even see the crop video. I think the Democrats I only saw the OG needed, video. I think the Democrats <laughs> need to throw a hail mary. They need to put Biden in tra training camp. Says started in the NFL. They need to put Biden in a no contact jersey at quarterback. Okay. For like the Dallas Cowboys, like an American team, and let him throw a few darts out there. Just, just, just put him in fucking pads. Put him in glasses. Say Biden, Biden playing football, throwing football with the Dallas Cowboys or some shit like that. I'm telling you, we need to, we need to put Biden in places where he looks athletic and young and vibrant. Right, bro. You put him in every sport. You are out of your fucking mind if you think he wouldn't just simply die if no. he tried to throw a fucking pigskin. Okay, <laughs> if he all, tried to toss, try. if he tried to toss a football, he would die in the process. We gotta, we gotta try. Okay, I'm all say we gotta try. All right, this is uncropped. I found the full video. The longer clip in context is even more horrifying. I wouldn't say it's like horrifying. It's just kind of funny. What? Oh no, this is bad. This is worse, almost. He absolutely is wandering off, bro, by the way. He like, just, no, he saw somebody that he knew, probably. <laughs> yeah, one of the parachuters. <laughs> he probably, he, that's what I do. Sometimes I wander like, off. Like, you can't have this. He you just can't got, do this with your face, bro. Sorry. You're you being just can't. ableist. He's got okay. ADHD. Yes, I am ableist. <laughs> He's the fucking president. He's got ADHD. He I 100% am ableist. I stand on that bit. I stand on that. <laughs> he was just distracted. <laughs> Y'all are, I'm just, I'm obviously fucking pulling. I'm pulling your legs. Thank God he put the fucking glasses on. He should never have them off, by the way. He should literally always have the glasses on at every moment. Also, we need to get him on finasteride and minoxidil. Both. You know how many fucking hairline restoration surgeries this man has gone through? Are you kidding me? You think so? I know so, motherfucker. In the 90s, he was bald as shit. Really? Yeah. Damn. Well, he's probably got no donor hair left. Excuse me. Like... Bro, even his arms, it's just like everything is so cooked, bro. Everything is so cooked. Before you say, oh, I don't know what to do with my arms in a photo either. Like, no, dude, this is like old man shit, okay? He can't move. He just can't fucking move. It looks like he's already like, this is a corpse that uh, is, is being propped up. He was talking to that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck. God damn it. Oh, this is worse than the McConnell pause. No, it's just like it's uh, around the same. Oh, I shit. would say. I'm Bullshit. ready for You can't tell me with the face with the on. Yeah, I mean this was I pretty funny. I love this one. This video is hilarious. <laughs> I out. love this video because it's literally like he's just vibing. He, 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 I think he forgot what's going on for a second. He's, he's like just, he's just vibing. It's that's like all. it's like dementia shit where you're like, where am I? What the fuck's going on? You know what? I think I need to meet Biden so I can start saying good things. He's going to call you the F slur like he's the Pope, bro. I think maybe that's what we need. Bro, if you read Austin the transcript of Biden's interview with uh, with Time, you'd kill him on the inside. No, I, I saw the transcript yeah. the unencelligible yeah, he's quote. Like, I saw it's that. Like, where like they couldn't they, they keep the going transcript they, couldn't they keep understand. going they keep going like yeah no i saw that it's like uh, so do you think it's hamas it's like hamas oh, I, <laughs> I saw it no i saw the fucking i saw the give me the move out <laughs> i saw that i saw it <laughs> no i saw it uh, uh, look what was that there was another really funny rnc uh like uh, clip that they had of him where he like <laughs> he's talking and he just goes women are the you know what my favorite thing that the Democrats are doing right now, which is not going to work? It's similar to the delusion of the Republicans trying to frame Hunter Biden in the same light that the Democrats are framing Trump in, is they're trying to make Trump look old, too. That's like their new strategy, is to like find clips of Trump stumbling over his words to try to make him seem just as old yeah. as Joe Biden, and it's not and he, gonna fucking work. And, it, and it, he does have his moments. Yeah, but like, it doesn't. It's Trump not definitely work. has brain farts. Trump definitely does, has brain yes, farts, but it's not there's, gonna work. There's hella people in here that used to do that. They've all stopped, by the way, at this point, <laughs> because like there's more of Trump that you can see now, and the more you see the more you you recognize like yeah both of these guys are old as shit but like one obviously has more going on 
up there. They, yeah, this he one. Lost. He knows so long as he was denied, a freedom can never be secured. She no loss. I mean, to be so honest, I think that that was a denied. Uh, our freedom can never be secured. I think that that she was no profound. Lost. She no so yeah. long as I think that was what, a What's he saying right there? Well, go back. Let me let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. decipher what he's saying. She no loss. She no so long as he was denied. Our freedom can never be secured. She understood she that for so long her freedom was denied. But then she did something, something around the lines of then now it's secured and it's powerful and it's patriotic and I'm voting for him. <laughs> God damn it. He won my vote with that fucking powerful speech. He won me over. Are you kidding me? I'm flying to the polls. <laughs> I'm flying to the fucking polls after that. Are you fucking kidding? That's my guy right there. All right. Well, go back and let me try to figure out what he said. Well, she knows so long as she was denied, our freedom can never be secured. She no loss. She no so he, long on, as Give me some context denied. here. This is out of context. Our Who is he talking about? Who is he talking she about? She no loss. She no. What was his speech about? Is that the who's do you, behind okay, him? Okay, okay, okay. Serious question. Do you think that you should, as the average voter, ever have to spend this much time to understand what the motherfucking Hassan, president of is saying? Of course not. Of okay, course. Okay. Well, you know. Then, you know. I, this is the thing is. I am, you know what? You get trolled harder by me than I think anybody. And that's why pe people are like, I get comments all the time like, Austin's such a fucking moron. And it's because you're taking everything I say seriously. I'm just fucking pulling your leg. America is a nation that you can know? be defined Obviously. in a single word. I was going to put him in a, I was going to put him in a, I was going to put him in Anybody could a, stumble put, over that word, okay? America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. Okay, I'm in, telling you, America. Biden needs to Biden needs to inv invite Chapel Roan to the White House. Okay, he needs to go throw footballs for the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, God, I don't know what else. By the way, if they want to think to is to take on government, if we get out of line, which they're talking again about, well, guess what? They need F-15s. They don't. Wait, what? this one. This one is lame. Like this is what Republicans is he reaching. About? He's saying. He's saying that, like, you can't take on the American government. You would need F-15s for that. And he's right. Yeah. Um, oh, this, no, not this that's one. Why, that's why every town. Why this? Yeah. Okay. He needs to start campaigning with Fetterman. It'll make him look capable. Bro, Fetterman <laughs> is too busy fucking no. American you, families. No, I got a great idea. Hold on. It, I, it hit me. It's time to fucking bring out Jimmy Carter. That's what we need to do. Bring out Jimmy Carter Put him next to Biden. Boom. Boom. Done. Election won. We've we've joked about this before. Yeah. Uh, have well, you? I, yeah. Okay. Fuck. I've, I've yeah. joked about this before. Like Jimmy yeah. Carter is like literally dead. <laughs> so he's like, oh, like he's like, he only gets wheeled out to places where his know. hands are like locked into place Dude, and his mouth is always agape. You I know? am shocked. I can't believe he's still alive. I cannot believe he's still alive. Anyway, the point is like, like I'll be honest. He's been alive for so long. Jimmy Carter, they've run out of hospice. I'm pretty sure. Like, she said, Shavel Row, my kick no is karma speech. Left. What's this after is, hospice? Listen, 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 right. listen, gay man. The okay, queen is talking, well, oh, sorry, okay? Sorry. Let's sorry. see what she had to say. You asked me to perform for pride. We want liberty, justice, and freedom for all. When you do that, that's when I'll come. Yes! Fuck yes. Are you kidding me? We grew up. Play the George H.W. Bush baseball <laughs> gift, please. What? No. What Austin is talking about? Smiling Jimmy Carter, seen in photo. No, this photo is freaky, bro. This photo is so freaky. They look so big versus like how tiny the other, <laughs> how tiny Jimmy Carter and his now, uh, you know, R.I.P. Uh, dead wife uh, look like. What a patriot. Um, Rest in peace. People got so mad at her because she's still performing in red states. What? Who? who there are a lot of. Yeah. There what are the a fuck? lot of. Hold on. There are a lot of uh, people that need people like chapel roan to come perform for them in yeah, red the states fuck? there's a lot of fucking uh like bro it's a little bit different to go people. to the red states and like you know be like a it's like like it's amazing that she's going to appear yeah, in red what states the fuck? what the fuck it's, the, it's a little different than like going to israel okay yeah uh, motherfuckers are acting like going to fucking mississippi and performing there is like yeah uh, unacceptable. it's amazing because there's queer people in mississippi that can't live their fucking truth yeah, and to people, have a queer representative. People want to do amazing. BDS on North Carolina is pretty funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, we need to no, we need to do BDS on red states. Yeah, dude, definitely. That's what we need to do.
Yeah, it's that <laughs> it's that same energy. People forget that like oh, people fuck. people people often forget that like uh you know these are the states that have the highest population of like black voters as well. Yeah, and there's also more fucking conservatives in the state of California than there are in fucking Mississippi yeah. and Missouri and Kentucky and Idaho combined. You know? BDS on Florida has been a take of yours forever, though. Yeah, that's no, no. I don't say BDS on Florida. I say something much worse than that. I say build the wall around Florida, extract all of the Floridians that don't want to participate in reactionary politics. Let it be the fucking anarcho-capitalist safe haven, okay? And and do not let any of them out of Florida. Build the wall around Florida, no, no. multiple walls, attack on Titan style, and consistently go in with helicopters. And like extract the children out because no one should suffer in that process. Hold on, what about Disney? What the fuck? Fuck it. No, I don't give a shit. Sink it with the rest fuck of the goddamn no. state. No, we need to save Disney. Let's move Disney to a liberal state. Yeah, whatever. Sure, like, I don't care. Uh, like, uh, uh, yeah. Here's the Florida project. Hold on. What's a woke? Yeah. What's uh? What, oh, hold on. I guess California I, has one okay, already, okay. but we Just, want Disney okay, World. Well, you, you stop talking over every video. Excuse you're still me. you're still worried about you're still worried about fucking Disney. Here, watch this. This is hold the on. You're part. the yapper in chief. You can't talk shit. We yeah, talk least, over the video. I pause, you pause every three seconds. Exactly. So if you want to talk, we can pause the video. Okay. All right. Well, I I don't have control. Okay. You can ask me. Hey, can you pause it? And right. I'll pause it for you. All right. Oh shit! Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. uh, Hassan, what are some other theories you have? I have an idea called the Florida Project. Okay. So Donald Trump built all these uh, these miles and miles of wall, right, uh, on the U.S. Sorry, wait. border. Who's that? <laughs> he's the previous president. He's he's very cool. He's a poster. He built all this wall. I say we take all the wall, okay, and we amplify. We wall around Florida, and we amplify that wall. Like it's like four times of wall. Have you guys ever seen Attack on Titan? I have. Yeah. It's like that, like multiple layers of wall, right? And then what we end up doing is we put every conservative in America, in Florida. We extract everyone that doesn't want to live in Florida outside of Florida. Okay. okay we put every conservative in Florida, they can live their best libertarian lives. Wow. And then we routinely helicopter in and extract children because they don't need to be subjected to you're that You're going to take children from their parents. Yes. Yeah. And then you're going to and then you're going <laughs> to helicopter them out. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Um, re-education camps. Okay. Because like, you know, <laughs> they, you know, they kind of like be. an internship. Oh, yes. yeah, that's a word. Kind so of tell like us that. the spider story again. <laughs> <laughs> was that Will? Yeah. When was this? Oh shit. This yeah. was uh, when we did Chuckle Sandwich. Oh my god. Yeah, re residential schools, re-education schools, whatever you want to call it, don't matter. Internship camp. <laughs> um. Mm. Okay, I don't care about Chapel Roan's longer speech. Okay, I don't. You Please listen stop. to Chapel Roan. I do, but like no, you don't. You liar. You're just no. Trying I did to, this that's... morning. No, I, I I listened to it this morning at the gym. You listened to it through I've... my door because I was listening to it. No, this I morning. listened to it while I was working out. I you're I... just trying. To, you're just trying to get the queer. No, on I just want to understand what the fuck's going on. And it's like it, it, Chapel Roan is like basically. You know, people are gonna probably get mad at me for this, but it's 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 very similar to Taylor Swift vibes, <gasps> but like for the gays. But that's not a bad thing. Taylor Swift is like one of the most successful musical artists of all time. How fucking dare you? How that's so fucked up. Wait, really? Dare you? No, I, I like it. You owe us armpit photos now. Wait, what? That. Did I say something bad? Yes, you did, you son of a bitch. I can't fucking believe you would say that. You make me sick. But Taylor is gay. Do you not believe in Gaylor? The lesbian incel crowd for the most part. He kind this of. This is worse than your 9/11 moment, by the way. I just want to let you know that. Is it? Yeah. I I don't think I I didn't mean it in a bad way. Like you're I mean gonna be on every way. gay piece of media. This is this is worse. You thought Fox News was bad? No, <laughs> I'm not saying like her politics are akin to Taylor <laughs> the Swift. The next or pride like in that. LA is gonna be in your like in your front yard. That's what's gonna happen after this. It's like when people say you're Ben Shapiro of the left in a good way. Yeah, no, that's fine. I would love that comparison. I don't debate as much <laughs> as he does, but like if someone were to say that, I'd be like, I think you're wrong because I'm not like primarily dunking on, uh, you know, baby. Children. Why don't you come over? Red wine supernova falling into me t swift has almost done nothing to be an advocate for anyone she co-switches when it comes to her sexuality but has done nothing to push lgbtq policy for deep fake legislation just a vapid billionaire singer jesus christ people have fucking smoked for taylor 
No, no, no. Chaperone is great politics. I'm not, I'm not disputing that at all. Like <laughs> that's not what my comparison was at, at all. I was just talking about the sound. I was down at the Pink Pony Club, folks. It was fantastic. There she was. There she was dancing in West Hollywood. It was great, folks. Believe me, I love Chapel Roan. She's fantastic. She really is. I love lesbians. Okay, all believe right. me. We're gonna start. Biden world leaders Queers agree. Trump, Fifty folks. billion. Okay, I'm gonna go. leave. No, 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 no. I'm leaving you with this. I'm gonna go well, pee. Uh, okay. All right. No, you have to. You have all to right. give commentary. You have to pause it. Okay. And you have to give commentary. Okay. On this issue. Seven summit in Italy. President Biden is sending a clear message Live to up, Russia baby. that the U.S. plan. Can I say something? This guy is very bald. And there's nothing wrong with that, but ever since I started experiencing a little hair loss myself, I will see, like, a bald guy, and then I will see, like, his kids, and I'll be like, oh, God, they have no idea what's coming. You know what I mean? And it's like, holy shit. Like, and you just don't even know, and then one day it fucking hits you. You know what I mean? It's like they have no idea. Sorry, anyway, go ahead. And to support Ukraine for the long haul, the president signed. I just want to let you know, for all those people that are experiencing hair loss, there is something you can do. Okay, my dad's not bald. My dad has a he, 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 my dad has a better hair genetics than I do. Go ahead. And a ten-year security agreement with Ukraine. The U.S. is also taking the lead in providing a fifty billion dollar loan paid for by frozen Russian assets. Nancy Cordes is covering the G7 summit. Nancy, why can't we use that for something else like education? Good morning, Vlad. A short time ago, the G7 or leaders healthcare. welcomed a special guest into their midst, Pope Francis, who arrived via helicopter in style here in southern Italy. It's his first G7 summit. He's here to oh, talk with the other leaders yes. about artificial intelligence as they grapple with how to make sure this technology develops in a manner that is ethical and protects the workforce. What? The other big focus here, as you mentioned, has been Ukraine and how to change the dynamic in this two and a half year war. What the fuck Russia. is the Pope going to do? <laughs> Ukraine. No, no, no. This is the same video. Uh -oh. Watched a series of victories Thursday. Oh. Far from the battlefield. First was the long-term security agreement signed <laughs> Yo. by President Biden. Yo, you Biden. know what the Pope needs to do? Say the F more. No, no, he needs to go to D.C. Pride and fucking enter the parade in the Pope Mobile. That's what he needs to do. I think, I think, I think he would. I think he would. I think his popularity would go would skyrocket. I don't think so. I the think, Pope. I think he would get assassinated <laughs> this time, not by like a Turkish uh, assassin, but instead like a fucking. Like an uh, American a Catholic. <laughs> no, an American Catholic would kill oh, him. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the Pope is very camp. It's just that, like... How would they? How would Catholics... I don't even know how they would respond to that. Biden and <laughs> President Zelensky pledging U.S. military aid and training for the next 10 years. Today is a truly historic day. Then all the Respectfully G7 to Zelensky, leaders agreed on a get him to dress up a little bit. Dollar... God damn, son. No, he's always coming out in like that fucking green. He's wearing fatigues, bro. He's in war. He's a I wartime know, but he's leader. always like, 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 can he, he's always coming out in those fucking green khakis. All right. Like, yeah. can we Put get a him fucking some... suit on, <laughs> bitch? God damn it, Zelensky. All right. Well, I'm sorry. Was that too much? No, I like Was it. Was that too much? I like it. I actually <laughs> respect that. No, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like, can we get, like, we are sending billions of dollars of weapons and nobody can fucking stop by a men's warehouse? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> can we throw a, can is we the, throw a fucking Italian suit in that shipment or something like that? For this God's is your sake. best take yet, I think, I'm on the broadcast. No, no memes. I'm straight I'm, up. Like, I'm sick and tired of seeing it. Like, quit coming out in the combat boots. Loan to help Ukraine rebuild to be paid for with the interest from frozen Russian assets. It's a vital step forward in providing sustainable support for Ukraine. The U.S. also imposed new sanctions on foreign banks that do business with Russia and announced that five countries had agreed to ship new Patriot missile batteries to Ukraine soon. You'll have some relatively quickly. All of this is designed to send a message to Russia's Vladimir Putin, who has more money and more manpower than Ukraine does. You cannot wait us out. You cannot divide us. And we'll be with Ukraine until they prevail in this war. The G7 leaders gathered here also discussed the Middle East, with President Biden sounding much more pessimistic about the prospects of a ceasefire deal between Hamas and Israel. Damn fuck it. does he know about a ceasefire deal bro his brain is fucking ceased to fire on all cylinders what are we talking about he doesn't know what's going on mm. like ah, I, I saw the footage of babies lit on fire with kerosene uh i saw 
I saw Palestinian, I saw Hamas doing, playing soccer with the baby skull. <laughs> that's right. That's why Israel keeps, Israel has a right to defend itself. Oh, no. If I say something more, I'll be able to get out of there. <laughs> that's what he said, okay? <laughs> Are you confident it's going to be done soon, sir? No. Oh, Jesus Christ. Here in Italy, Jesus Biden was Christ. also asked about his son Hunter's conviction Tuesday on three federal gun charges. I said I'd abide by the jury decision. I will do that. I'm be honest. We need to run Hunter. Yeah, we do. No, I'm being honest. Like, I think we Hunter, do. Hunter is a much cooler felon than Donald Absolutely, Trump. Absolutely, dude. Are, are, you, are you kidding me? Absolutely. So much fucking cooler than Donald America Trump. America needs to be run by a fail son at the fail son uh, age range. You know what I mean? Because, like, because, like, Donald Trump is a fail son. Yeah. He is. He, he, like, basically tried to keep his business afloat with Fred Trump, his pappy's money, and still failed to do so. But, like, <laughs> Hunter Biden is a fail son, and his dad is still alive. Yeah. Barely. Still alive. You know what I mean? If if Trump would have gotten the same charges as Hunter Biden, Trump would win this election in the landslide. If he got caught up with, like, gun charges and drugs, are you fucking kidding me? Holy shit. It'd Trump be over. Trump's fail sons are fucking lame as shit. Yeah, it's like Hunter fraud, is way, man. Is way sicker. You know way, what I mean? What is this? You need to see this. When do you think <laughs> film was made? What? What? Nick, when do you think movies were? Well, they have documentaries about the world wars. When? Oh, no, hold on. Don't say anything. When do you think? What is this clip? No, keep bro? Going, keep going. World War Two was. When do you think World War Two? I mean, was? I know do when it think... was in the 1800s. Oh my God, that's no. not right. So you think they had the power? It wasn't to... in the 1900s. You think? No, hold on a second. You no. think in the 1800s that they had the power to make an atomic bomb and send it? Oh, the atomic bomb was World War II. So that was what, like 1920? Oh fuck! He's getting closer. Technically, he's getting closer. Do you know about like the crash of the stock market? Do you 2008? understand? Oh no no like, no no no. When? What do you? What year do you think? When did film become a thing? Uh, in the well, it wasn't the 1800s, Nick. <laughs> so when because was Wizard of Oz? Because they were still riding horses. I thought in we the just 1800s. celebrated the, well, like, the hundred-year anniversary in the of the 1800s. And what year do you, we did not? It's not been a hundred years. You don't know anything. Joan of Arc's a gay icon. <laughs> we're, not, we're not getting out of this. <laughs> when do you think the Wright brothers made the first plane? The 1800s. No. It was like it 19 was. teens, I think. 19 something. Like the 1900s. Oh. But what time? Oh, it was 1908. Like 20s. No, they had those big skirts. So maybe like 19. You guys, I don't think you realize, but jet airplanes have been around since okay, like the 1908 50s. is like, isn't that like remarkably close? You guys, well, one thing that I think shocks a lot of people is airplanes, like jet airplanes, have been flying since like the like early 50s. And like we, we have not we're really we're still using the same planes yeah, from no, that no, like time. We have not like we have not like air travel um we've been able to fly the same speed since like the fifties in the air. Like it, we haven't gotten much faster. We we did briefly with the Concord Columbus and then it was very <laughs> inefficient and crashed yeah. a lot. You were going back to Columbus <laughs> to 1492. 1776, America became a country. He's just trying to fucking say things that he does know from history. This is a song. So, so in 1776, but the Titanic had to have been the early 1900s. The Titanic. Yeah. Yeah. 1912. 08. 28. 38. So 1939 is when The Wizard of Oz was made. What? 1939. We're almost at its hundred. Is that crazy? So no. 1939. So we're like, when, let's see when the first. The movie. Wicked Witch of the West is a gay icon. Now come on now. <laughs> when do you think World War II was? Give me a year because it was like. Was it before or after that? Why he, don't you tell us? It had to have been before. He's, he said that because he's seen Wicked. You on Broadway. mean to tell me they made the Wizard of Oz and the world's decided to still go to war? No, it was before that. Was it? Was it? This is the most homophobic thing you've made me watch on Pride Month. Like, this is... Okay, you don't know. It was the same time. I don't think he's dumb. Well, no I think he's missing World War II was they starting the up movie. Mid, in the mid-1930s is when everything just, started developing. And by the 1940s, he just hasn't learned early 1940s, at a full-blown World of War II. The Wizard of Oz came out during mm -hmm. the war? 
that was America's He's answer. Like you when you get into a plane. Well, I don't he know if we know were directly involved yet because we hadn't been, we hadn't been bombed by Pearl Harbor, but Hitler had already started yeah, the working his started way through before. Europe, and we were trying not to get involved. Wow, yes, nobody wanted I to get just involved. Assumed it would have been before that. FDR wanted to get involved. Yes, I know. FDR was trying to ship. They were shipping weapons to the UK or uh, ships and stuff to the UK, trying FDR to find ways. FDR wanted to get involved, and then Pearl Harbor happened, and he was like, "Come on, guys, we got hit. We got to do it. Yeah. We got to do it." And then to Germany. Him. Then Germany declared war on the United States, and then the United States. Well, we declared war on Japan first. Then we declared war on Germany. After Germany declared war on the United States, and then we got involved, motherfucker. And then yeah, really, the greatest really fucking war of all this time. Is, this is a gay that also doesn't read but watches a lot of documentaries. No, no, no. I'm, I'm telling you. Look, I know the, this is, they we're in the pocket. The Russians did some stuff on the Eastern Front, but we are the Americans. You okay? cannot <laughs> say that the Russians did some stuff on the Eater, Eastern Front. That's hey, 80% of I'm the war. All I'm saying is we were against Hitler from the start. Okay, uh, It was 80% of the war. That's crazy. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah, they did some stuff like liberate most of the camps. Yeah, look, I know. D-Day. How about D-Day? And um, Okay, that's also, great. D-Day is great. We were fucking rocking shit in this the is Pacific. Like, this is like okay. when British people talk <laughs> about Dunkirk, okay? It's like, it's an afterthought in the grand scheme of things. Look, are you kidding <laughs> me? What are we talking about? Are you kidding me? Fighting a war on two fronts, we were fucking rocking shit in it's the like oceans. It's like remember Dunkirk, my <laughs> fucking hell, right? We did the fucking oh. thing. Dunkirk <laughs> was just a retreat. <laughs> yeah, but like, again, if you ask a British person, there was a fucking poll that we looked at literally the other day. They asked British people, like, who shared most of the responsibility uh. on, like, who, who was most responsible for fucking defeating the Nazis. And, and they, they were said, like, most British people were like, of course, England. <laughs> they said England? <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, England did do a great job of never <laughs> surrendering. Okay. They did. They stuck it. They, they keep calm and carried That's on, right. lads. They did. And Hitler made some very tactical yeah. mistakes. Look, 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 look at this. How insane. Yes. 42%. Mm -hmm. France? What the f- Wait. That's, dude, dude. Are you fucking kidding 12 me? 12% France? United States. France? 12 France, France surrendered. France and the Soviet Union have the same. What? France surrendered. There is a right answer to this. They there is a right answer. This isn't one of those things where it's like, oh, it's they a folded. matter. They folded like six months into the conflict. Dude, dude, dude. There is literally, this is not like a thing that is subjective. There is an objective answer to this. <laughs> and the <laughs> answer is the Soviet Union. The Netherlands just didn't even fight. They just gave up. They're literally talking. Well, this, uh, that's why they're at zero percent. But like, <laughs> I know, but they made the list is what I'm saying. Look, the point, yeah, they made it to dunk on them. And 21% okay? of people said irrelevant. All of, these, all of these countries had, well, ex with the exception of like Canada and shit, like all these countries had their own form of resistance, including France, okay? Including, yes, but not limited to that. France. Yes. The, the ridiculous part of this is 42% of the Brits think they did the most to defeat Nazi Germany. Well, I mean, that's wrong. That's because, insane. Because we did the most to defeat everything. If without the United States, we'd be all speaking German. Okay, this is my this is my okay. most patriotic take, okay. and I will never the, surrender. You, but it's objectively wrong. Like I am not one that discounts America's contributions in World War II. Yes, I think it was fucking awesome. We did no. amazing things. In World no, War it's II. like the it's Look, the I can. I watch that. Band of Brothers, and I fucking stand up and I salute. Hey, okay, that's all I'm saying is that's bullshit. The Soviets had a lot of help from weather. I just want to let you know they had good RNG. No, and, and you look, look, realistically, yeah, yes. America carried the most because yes. Germans yes. looked at American yes. engineering and innovation in the field yes. of racism guys, technology. I know, I know, I know what <laughs> Germans I know. were like, damn, I know those guys how are critical. Great. The Soviet Union was to defeating Nazi Germany and how many lives were lost by the Soviet Union uh, fighting. Yes. Nazi Germany. Thank okay. you. Put some I respect do, I on do, it. I do concede that that was, it was not just us. <laughs> And I know part of the in, in the part of the and the Americans were aware of the Soviets' contributions on the European in the European theater, and that was part of the justification to use the nuclear bomb not once but twice, so that the Soviets didn't have any claim on uh, the United States wanted to be the ones to take out Japan. This is one of the most insane things I've heard. You should read more literature about World War II. It's on your blasting out for uh, No, they, 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 no, hold on, hold on. You don't think that's not, that is true. What did I say that was a for? I want to know what, um, wait, are they question marking me? No, they're saying, the they're Soviets saying we're going to get involved in Japan. Austin, not everything that they're responding to is responding no, to but what they, you're but they saying. were though. 
They were, and the United States was aware of that. I don't know why this dude yeah, thinks yes, that. Yes, they were. Oh, my God. I, I'm so shocked. Soviet forces killed more German soldiers than the Western counterparts. According to 76% of the German military is dead. Yes. This person, I need to know what he means. I didn't hear Austin Law. What he say? No, you're talking. Address what you mean. What did I say as far as like America's contributions were phenomenal, both in the field of battle, okay, on the Western front, but beyond that with uh, offering material, material support, okay? It was very significant. I've never, I've never actually said, I've never actually discounted America's contributions to World War II. It's like one of the most patriotic fucking moments that you'll ever catch me. It's... Uh, yes, and look, right here, Chad. But, but having said that, it's ridiculous to discount that, like, the USSR played the most significant uh, role in World yes, War II. It's the United true. States did not want the USSR to be a part of the defeat of Japan. Truman and a, a new Secretary of State, James... Uh, how do you pronounce that? Behrens? began to worry about the implications of the Soviet entry into the war against Japan, which would inevitably expand Soviet influence in Asia. And if you've seen Oppenheimer, folks, okay, you will know that the Americans were more concerned about Soviet influence and communism more than even Nazi influence. In the, fact. You know, I mean, they uh, were more. Patton, they were more. They were more afraid of Patton the communists getting a hold of uh, the nuclear recipe than the Nazis themselves. Way too many Americans on average basis think the Soviets were the bad guys in World War II. Thanks to 80 years of Red Scare bullshit being pumped in the culture. Just don't ask them who the good guys were, I guess. That's so funny. That's not false. That is so insane, dude. That is so fucking insane that people... I mean, that, that French study on this matter is probably the most, like, significant... Um, I think, like, in the immediate aftermath of World War II, they asked, like, French people, they pulled the French population, like this exact same thing who did the most to defeat nazi germany and obviously like i think it was like 75 percent of them said ussr when they asked a couple of years ago they said the united states of america the successful 70-year campaign to convince the usa and not the ussr beat hitler yeah on may 1945 57 percent said the ussr did the most uh most of the contributions to defeating nazi germany came from the ussr 1994, it was at 25%. USSR, was 49% probably, America. It was probably... June a, 2004, 58% America, 20% USSR. It was probably a straw poll, to be honest with you. No, this is like... Bro, I'm, I'm just telling you, this is a, a <laughs> demonstration of how Red Scare propaganda <clears throat> is, is phenomenally successful. My history teacher taught us that the USSR were an ally of circumstance, that it was always good. It was always a temporary alliance since they... According to him, they were alive with Germany before. Yeah. The, what does your teacher say about appeasement? Hassan, I got to go. I got to go to a... Hassan. Okay. Get out of here. I got to go to a photo shoot. Get Thanks for having here. me. Uh, I'll be back. All right. I think later. All right. Wait, no, no, no. The other way. Move it the other way and then make sure that it doesn't fall off. Oh, God. It's like close to falling off. There it is. Okay. Perfect. Oh, that is manufacturing consent in full display. Okay. They can pull whoever they want. We have history books to tell us, bro. You just, we just watched a video of this dude named Matteo Lane having a 10 minute discussion about not knowing when world war two happened, thinking it happened in the 1800s. It doesn't matter what is written in the fucking history books. Okay. No, people don't read at all. And and clearly, the way that even people explain history, regardless of what is written in the history books, is not exactly great. Okay? The gay agenda derailed us. Yeah. Oh, I've been meaning to watch this one too, but... Oh, Mateo is the one that knew Nick didn't. Okay, sorry. When I arrived in the U.S. and was taught World War II, Stalin and USSR was part of the bad guys, Lamont, that's insane. Like, that is just... I don't know. I don't know how to... I don't know how to deal with that, dude. I don't know. Anyway, let's just move on. I, I'm getting fucking frustrated for no reason. Mateo stops close friend from what I know. A partner. Hunter Biden faces anything from probation to years in jail when he is sentenced later this year. President Biden was asked whether he would commute his son's sentence, and he answered. I've said this before, but um, 
bringing up the Molotov uh, pack is akin to literally Republicans, modern Republicans being like, uh, Abraham Lincoln was a Republican, I'll have you know, while wearing the Confederate garb, okay? It's so fucking stupid. That is the least consequential, least significant aspect in comparison to what came after. It is an idiotic rebuttal. And not only is it an idiotic rebuttal, it is so transparently ahistorical, especially when considering that there was also appeasement. It's like saying America kept its alliances, its economic alliances with Nazi Germany, which they did. It is very weird. It's so funny how people play fast and loose with like history and historic revisionism when it wants to suit their propaganda purposes. I find it strange, especially because like I fucking ride for uh, the allied forces across the board. I mean, I, I think what America did was awesome. Okay. World War II, major fucking dub. We kind of rested on that for the rest of our imperial endeavors. Kind of, oh, that's the reason, reason why we still point to Hitler anytime we have a new bad guy that we must invade in a nation with like extractable natural uh, natural resources. Okay, the historical revision is a big contributor to the rise of fascism again. I mean, it's just playing an active role. I think. You think dropping the atomic bomb in Japan was a dub? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like. Fucking the defeat of Nazi Germany. Brits were there from the beginning, and if they weren't, all of Europe would have been German, and America would have allied with them. There were definitely... It was touch and go for America. Let's be real. Okay? <sighs> it, the Soviets invaded Poland, but okay, I guess that's all good. Yeah, I don't care, dude. Like, you know... Like, what's the... What's the you, you make it seem like the alternative of having it be fully Nazi is better. Like, what the fuck is this conversation? I hate having this conversation with the fucking Polish. It's like, well, it was half Nazi. Okay, who's the other half? Which half was better? Lesser evil, okay? Vote for the lesser evil. Anyway. The history is complex. USSR by far sacrificed the most and did the most damage, but it would not have been possible without the assisting allied nations. So, like, is the assist as important as the bucket? I don't know. Yes, it is. I think the assist is very important. And it's not just an assist. Um, no, it is it, it, uh, America's contribution contributions in World War II were very significant. I would never say that it was not. That is ridiculous. Having said that, however, the, to, the notion that like they were the notion that like uh, like the U.S. contributions were not the most significant is also silly in defeating Nazi Germany. Hello. We hear a lot about a supposed Hitler-Stalin pact, and much noise is made trying to link by extension two wildly differing ideologies and nations together through some forced horseshoe theory nonsense. If you're unaware, the horseshoe theory claims that the far left and the far right, rather than being at opposite and opposing ends of a linear political continuum, are instead incredibly similar. This is the sort of brain dead take you expect from so-called liberals who consider themselves enlightened when doing their both sides are bad shtick. Historically, the so-called liberal center has always immediately sided with the far right when it came down to it, while the far left was the only one to have any real form of successful and organic resistance. But that's not why I'm here today. Let's discuss the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. That's the funniest part about this entire conversation is like the double genocide theory is unironically a fascist one. That's number one. And number two, these are the very same liberals that say like, the KPD's action caused a reaction from liberals to side with the Nazis. You're literally admitting that you would now, you know, not even a hundred years after World War II, saying that you would be voluntarily siding with the Nazis if the communists got too out of control. That's insane. That's exactly what happened. Anyway. Note, the USSR and the Stalin era specifically was an incredibly nuanced episode of history. There are no great men, history is made by people and material conditions. Actions aren't taken in a vacuum, but instead are affected by real deficits and changes as they occur. Very rarely does something in history happen because someone is crazy, whatever that means. Much more commonly, we're simply missing or refusing to investigate the context. You don't have to like the USSR to be fair to the conditions it found itself in, nor do you need to agree with the actions taken just because you can understand why a certain action was taken. Broaden your mind little, don't insult your intelligence, and be better than those that lap up the laziest pop history propaganda. Let's get started. A frequent trope we hear is this. The 1939 Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was a military alliance between- People still say that every historian acknowledges the suppression of the communists and the bolstering of the Fry Corps greatly aided the Nazis' rise. Yeah, historians acknowledge it. Liberals, like average 
Average liberals are not historians. We're not talking about like, we're not talking about like actual academics. If you look at the broad majority of like Holocaust and genocide scholars, they consider what Israel is doing to also be akin to genocidal actions, genocidal ideation, genocidal intent. That doesn't change the discourse, though. If you listen to the liberals that want to fucking uh, that want to defend Israel, they're going to be like, nah, 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 nah. They were asking for it, actually. Palestine's been asking for it. So that's not what I'm talking the about. USSR and Nazi Germany. This framing usually follows attempts of paralleling the USSR and Nazi Germany, and by extension, socialism and fascism, in an ideological attempt at painting a certain strand of liberalism as a part and somehow more legitimate to the concepts of integrity, quote unquote, being on the right side of history, etc., than socialism. Note that this rarely is used against fascism and is intended solely to paint socialism in a bad light. I wonder why. Let's give some general background information. Soviet Russia and the subsequent USSR, having only fairly recently won a short but brutal civil war with Tsar's forces and invasions by many foreign powers, oriented foreign policy towards Germany in the mid-1920s. Two lesser-known treaties, the Treaty of Locarno and the Treaty of Special Relations with Berlin, helped shape that Soviet foreign policy. The Treaty of Locarno, between the main European belligerents of World War I, sought to establish a lasting peace, which Soviet Russia would generally benefit from, since the country was so utterly devastated by the Great War and the Civil War following the October Revolution. However, the USSR viewed the treaty with suspicion, since it appeared that Germany was joining an anti-Soviet bloc. The other treaty, that of special relations with Berlin, was meant to assuage these fears by being a five-year treaty with Weimar Germany, in which they would be neutral in the event that either country was attacked by also, one thing to always consider is that Hitler was a major West taboo, okay? Both with America and also uh, the British monarchy, England in general. He was a big West taboo, okay? A third party. Unfortunately, the optimism for long-term peace wouldn't last long. In the late 1920s, the Nazis began their rise to power, which infamously culminated in the appointment of Hitler as the Chancellor Anglo of Germany boo. in 1933. The rise of the Nazis caused the USSR to refocus its foreign policy efforts to combat this threat. The policy, which came to be known as collective security, attempted to strengthen relationships with France and Britain in an attempt to isolate Germany. Meanwhile, the fear of Western leaders' imaginations and the interests they served led them to irrationally fear the spread of communism and were reluctant to enter into diplomatic relations with the USSR lest they catch the communist virus. Instead, the West decided that appeasing the Nazis would be a better strategy, and we all know how that turned out. As a result of this reluctance on the part of the West, the USSR was forced to fend for its security alone. Back to the video in just a second. Let's hear from Keeps. Male pattern baldness is a genetic condition that affects two out of every three guys by the time they're 35. Goddamn. Get professional care for hair loss from the comfort of your home. I don't know I would use Westaboo argument though, because I mean, he was kind of a Muslim boo as well. Um, to a certain degree, I think. I mean, he he was an Aryan. Uh, he, he stole a lot from like Eastern culture and slapped it on to like German... Uh, like German mythology. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash I came. Now let's get to the background of the pact. The Treaty of Non-Aggression between Germany and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, more commonly known as the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, so named for the signatures of each government, the Foreign Minister of Nazi Germany at the time, Joachim von Ribbentrop, and Soviet Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov. The agreement was simple, if one ignores the secret provisions. It straightforwardly lays out a 10-15 to 15 year period of mutual neutrality in which neither country would commit aggression against the other, support or provide aid to a third party committing aggression against the other, among stipulations regarding peaceful solutions to disagreements between the respective countries. However, there are four so-called secret provisions, and the famous partitioning of Poland isn't among them. That is part of the mythos. What Eastern stuff did he steal? Bro, what do you think the swastika is? Like, the concept of Aryan, the concept of the Aryan race and the swastika is just like, he literally ripped that shit and made it so goddamn prominent, dude. He fucking ruined it for like billions of people. <laughs> surrounding the agreement and serves the purpose of demonizing the USSR as well as deflecting blame from the allied western powers appeasement of Hitler and the Nazis. The article that is misconstrued as Stalin working with Hitler to split Poland in half territorially for the same expansionist ends actually states something quite different and reveals the true Nazi intentions which we'll discuss in the next section. Suffice to say it takes quite the quirky reading of the article to come to a conclusion as outlandish as Stalin conspiring with Hitler to split Poland. It takes an equal amount of audacity to repeat this nonsense as historical fact, but that's a conversation for another time. Alright, let's get into more detail. We'll start by recalling that the USSR actively pursued overt military alliances with Britain and France in a policy known as collective security. 
One such offer, made just two days before the war began, had the USSR sending 1 million troops, artillery, and airborne forces to help stop Hitler if they agreed to the pact. Such a pact would have drastically altered the course of history. Unfortunately, both Britain and France declined the offer, forcing the USSR to operate unilaterally without Allied support. With the collective security policy not bearing fruit, the USSR decided the next best course of action was some kind of treaty with Germany that would delay the war machine the Soviets knew were coming for them. Soviets understood that the West's appeasement policy that had resulted in the annexation of Austria and Czechoslovakia was a failure and prelude to an expansionist war by Germany, and that Poland was in Germany's crosshairs next. The Soviets sought to buy as much time to prepare and therefore was left with the unenviable position of having to sign a non-aggression treaty with Germany in order to provide for the security of the USSR and her citizens. All this is also forgetting that the USSR was the last country to sign a non-aggression pact after Poland and France and important to important to fucking mention this aspect I think for many okay this is something that absolutely zero liberals acknowledge as a real part of history when they talk about the Hitler Stalin pact Belgium, the Baltic countries, amongst others. That's always never mentioned, I wonder why. If you think this explanation sounds conspiratorial or is call me propaganda, then consider that this explanation was common as early as 1943 when in Time Magazine, former US ambassador to the USSR Joseph Davies. All the while, the irony of course is that like, Hitler's rise to power straight up was on the backs of the Red Scare. Like that's, that's the, that is the thing that people fuse to comprehend for some reason, which is like, akin to at that point it's akin to holocaust revisionism like liberalism lends itself so much so perfectly to like this deep uh visionist attitude towards like what the nazis uh what the nazis demonstrated what they represented what they believed like their number one enemies were literally any kind of revolutionary sentiment any kind of fucking communism any kind of trade unionism socialism that's it they called this movement judeo-bolshevism like they were like this is the number one villain in german society is jewish bolshevism okay something that we still talk about in this day and age we just call it cultural marxism nowadays if you want to know what that is when you hear when you hear a modern republican talk about cultural marxism they are basically trying to find a more appropriate way of saying Judeo-Bolshevism. They might not even hate Jewish people themselves, but they basically are still ripping the same exact fascist ideology, the same exact, uh, the, the same exact fascist sentiment, okay? Judeo-Bolshevism turned into cultural Marxism. Not only that, but also the Frankfurt School is still pointed to Jordan Peterson regularly used to talk about the Frankfurt School and its indecent, uh, immoral, generative pact on Western culture. You know who else thought that a bunch of Jewish scholars who were socialist or socialist adjacent were generating society and disrupting the moral fabric? of Western supremacist ideology, the Nazis, that's who. It is damn near identical. Reactionary sentiment rarely ever changes, okay? They adapt to the time, they adapt to the new villains, was interviewed about various topics regarding the USSR. In his response to the fifth question about the USSR's opaque foreign policy, he said, in part, and I quote, when they, the Soviets, lost faith in both the will and the capacity of the Western democracies to join them realistically to stop Hitler, they still tried to maintain their security and their peace by entering into a non-aggression pact with Hitler in 1939. This was not a pact for mutual offensive against Germany's enemies. In that particular, it provided only that neither would attack the other. They gained precious time, which they feverishly employed to protect their security against the inevitable Nazi attack. This isn't the only mention of this explanation in the same issue of time. Calling the USSR, and I quote, realistic, it backs up the claim with the following. She, the USSR, had been the greatest advocate of collective security, but when she saw that the democracies would not support that policy, she turned completely around and gained time to prepare herself by signing a pact with Hitler. 
The third mention is brought up in a larger context of other treaties and agreements the USSR had entered into prior, including their acceptance into the League of Nations. And I quote, Under the aegis of then Foreign Commissar Litvinov, the USSR tried to establish collective security as a method of thwarting the rising tide of fascism. But the League of Nations collapsed and was followed by appeasement in Munich, the Soviet Nazi non-aggression pact in 1939, and the entrance of the Reds into the war when Hitler invaded them on June 22, 1941. By now, it should be crystal clear that the narrative that resulted from Cold War distortion is in blatant contravention of the facts. The fact the USSR signed with Germany wasn't a military alliance, it was a means of buying time to prepare for the easily anticipated invasion. Related to the military alliance myth is the claim that Stalin conspired with Hitler to partition Poland between Germany and the USSR in one of the secret articles of the pact brought by the Germans, specifically secret article number two. If you read through it, it's fairly clear as to what Germany's true intentions were. The most obvious happens to be in the first line of the article. In the event of a territorial and political rearrangement of the areas belonging to the Polish state, this is a rather long-winded and euphemistic way to describe an invasion. The phrasing really betrays what the Germans wanted to do and then presents them in the treaty as a pure hypothetical. Also, remember, this is a secret provision of the treaty, which only serves to further make clear that Germany was targeting Poland in what had till then been a series of easy, albeit diplomatically draining, annexations via the appeasement by Western powers. After all, while the Germans made it obvious that they were bent on expansion, they still wanted to have the veneer of plausible deniability. They soon use another euphemism for invasion as well, since the existence of an independent Polish state is implied to be in the hands of the Signese respective governments rather than, you know, the Polish. With respect, you're a smart guy and you know a lot of these discussions are disingenuous by libs and to try to act like Stalin didn't have sympathies with certain odious aspects of Nazi racism or rather mercenary idea about the sanctity of life is beneath you. There are better ways for us to be communist, my friend. When we are having a conversation about World War II, this this is a ridiculous uh, assertion. This is a ridiculous insertion in a conversation when we are talking about liberal uh, liberals behaving in a disingenuous manner and promoting an aspect of history. Okay, promoting uh, promoting the notion of like the USSR aligning with Nazi Germany. It is literally a historical of the highest order. Okay. This has nothing to do with like Stalin's own personal, Stalin's behavior after or how he conducted his own affairs internally within the USSR, which isn't just uh, Stalin anyway. <sighs> what a ridiculous, uh, what a ridiculous time to place this. Which people themselves. Poland was unfortunately really affected by anti-Semitic conspiracies in the form of Judeo-Bolshevism. The extremely stupid idea that Jewish people were overrepresented in and thereby controlled the Soviet government. This anti communist sentiment was a powerful guiding force in the Polish foreign policy. Obviously, is quite condescending and gay. Yeah, bro, it's like talking about the business plot or talking about like fucking Patton saying that we fought the wrong enemy in World War II or some shit. And, and then, and then bringing that up to be like America actually didn't do enough during World War II. America actually secretly uh, was was on the side of the Nazis during World War II, which is, again, would be a historical if I were to act like America's collective actions, like America's most significant actions during World War II did not greatly contribute to the fall of Nazi Germany. It did. Shunning the possibility of an alliance with the USSR, Poland sought to force strategic military alliances with Britain and France to guard against a Nazi invasion and signed a mutual defense pact only months before the invasion would actually occur. In this context, Stalin had to make a difficult decision about how to best allow the USSR to survive the oncoming assault, which would be called Operation Barbarossa, which began in 1941. Additionally, the notion that Stalin was secretly planning a joint offensive with Hitler in order to partition Poland hasn't really been substantiated. If you look at the order of events, the reaction of the Soviet leadership, and the actions of the Red Army, which we're going to talk about in a second, this is hella boring. Suck my fucking dick, dude. Okay, take a fucking day off. I've heard a couple other people chirp like this. Shut the fuck up, okay? It's an 18-minute video. I don't give a shit. If you find it to be boring, then tune out, okay? Go watch someone else. Second, you clearly see that this was not the typical actions of a conquering army. Stalin's focus on an invasion threat from Germany and the time he was trying to buy to thwart one was only in regard to the USSR, not Poland. Of course, he only cares about his own nation. The USSR leadership was absolutely blindsided by the Nazi invasion of Poland. It occurred only one week after signing the pact and only one day after the Supreme Soviet approved it. These are not the actions of a state anticipating a joint offensive. Just to be clear, the USSR leadership understood Hitler was planning on invading Poland, but not so immediately and so blatantly. Due to them being caught off guard, the Soviet invasion of Poland not only happened days after the Nazi invasion, but was hastily and poorly organized. 
The Red Army was still devastated from World War I and the Civil War. Much of the Soviet efforts at the time had been focused on improving the lives of people and rebuilding the country. In fact, both citizens were often very surprised that the Red Army was so deprived, as far as armies go at the very least. Citizens mentioned that they're malnourished or poorly clothed, that they were foul-smelling because of a tar that they used in their footwear, as well as mentioned how Red Army soldiers were fascinated by objects that Polish peasants found commonplace. Again, not surprising for a nation that had just started its first round of industrialization. As I don't, practically all the areas the Soviets would go on to quote-unquote occupy prior to 1941 either were part of the post tsarist political structure or had their own episode of the Bolshevik Revolution which happened to be defeated either by white armies, for example Finland in the Civil War, or German World War I policy, specifically Brest-Litovsk. Okay, so if the USSR didn't conspire with the Nazis to partition Poland amongst themselves, then why did the USSR invade Poland? There's plenty of sources that already focus and almost exclusively mention the many unjustifiable mistakes committed by the Red Army, as with any army, of course. But this overemphasis really only serves as a way for liberals to equate the communists and Nazis, which is an ideological pool with the depth of a puddle. Let's take a look into the nuance. The USSR leadership's original justification given for the invasion of Poland was to regain lands lost in the Treaty of Riga, which concluded the 1919-1921 Polish-Bolshevik War. Ukraine and Belarus, then a part of the USSR, were invaded by Poland in their attempt to re-establish the borders of the Polish Empire of 1772. In the treaty, the Polish border was established by Britain and the US at 200 miles east of the Curzon Line. However, due to the march of time and the migrations of people that occurred during previous eras, the lands acquired by Poland were no longer ethnically Polish, but were mainly Ukrainian and Belarusian. Therefore, Poland was seen as an occupier or colonial power even in these regions by minority groups. The motivations to invade Poland expressed by the Red Army, however, were quite different. They claimed they were compelled to counter the invasion by Germany and liberate the Polish proletariats and oppressed minorities. Now, of course, this may sound kind of two-faced, but they did genuinely believe this stuff, and the work of Kotkin goes as far as to prove as much. The Red Army used slogans of class emancipation and national liberation, which caused confusion amongst the various minorities who had their own interests and scores to settle with Poland. While the Soviets intended to rescue Belarusians and Ukrainians from mostly Polish class domination, each group found support for their own particular ethnic claims and or projects, of course. Red Army soldiers entering Poland, tasked with preparing local populations ideologically for the invasions, shouted slogans which explicitly encouraged the population to, and I quote, rectify the wrongs it had suffered during 20 years of Polish rule, and disseminated very base leaflets, actually, that urged Polish soldiers to turn their weapons against the capitalists, the landowners, and the military officials, which similarly encouraged the local population to assault their landlords with, quote, whatever was at hand, scythes, axes, and pitchforks. <laughs> Anyways, as a result of this propaganda effort, much of the initial brutality that occurred in what would become Soviet-occupied Poland, or reconstituted Ukrainian as the maps get fuzzy after a while, began prior to the beginning of the invasion proper. It should also be noted that most of it was selected, targeting only those of the then perceived as oppressor classes such as landlords. This is important to mention given that so much attention is given to later mistakes and this period gets unfairly lumped in by liberals since they see mega landlords getting a comeuppance and their land expropriated as a bad thing. I don't, clearly. Anyways, the Red Arm wasn't only handing leaflets out, they were also given substantial spending money. This was further facilitated by the ruble being declared legal tender in the occupied area on parity with the Polish currency. Exact figures are hard to pin down, but locals were shocked by the sheer amount of goods the Red Army soldiers were buying, and maybe even more surprising, doing so without haggling prices. As the Red Army advanced through Poland, a significant power vacuum pushed swiftly ahead of it. This created an immediate demand for auxiliary measures to maintain some kind of order. This led to the formation of something called the Citizens Guard, a voluntary assembly of mostly quote-unquote patriotic rightist citizens in various municipalities. Mostly local people, minor officials, that kind of stuff. And their primary function was to aid the dwindling local governments, who had by then mostly disbanded, in order to ensure the safety of the remaining population, just to maintain order, basically. Unsurprisingly, the Citizens Guard was legitimized by its connection with the prior right-wing regime, which influenced its ethnic and class structure unsurprisingly. Despite the widespread anti-communist sentiments of Poland, many towns and villages turned out in large numbers to greet and welcome the Red Army. Not all were spontaneous, nor did all have local organizational impetus. Prior to the invasion, the USSR sent people ahead of the Red Army to organize receptions for incoming troops. The local residents, especially those belonging to the Polish and Belarusian ethnic minority groups, seemed to be prepared for the Soviet invasion, and although some were enthusiastic about their arrival, others needed to be persuaded or coerced even into organizing welcoming gestures. A crucial factor contributing to the positive atmosphere surrounding the Soviet troops' entry was their general perception that their presence prevented the arrival of Nazi forces or in some places even expelling them by force. These were compelling reasons to greet the Red Army as some sort of liberator, unsurprisingly. You have to remember that. They didn't want to develop Poland though, Soviets feared them. Soviets still fear the Polish. We all fear the Polish. One day, Poland will develop and, you know, everyone else will know. Along with the massive anti-Semitism within Poland, there was also at a time a fairly large radical left movement that was all but crushed and dispersed by the far right-wing government. Anyways, One the day. celebrations, whether organic or not, 
were very amicable, predominantly comprising young individuals from ethnic minorities such as Belarusians, Jews, and some Ukrainians. They included the construction of triumphal arches, the raising red banner, sharing troops of flowers, hugging and kissing them, the usual stuff. Soviet invasion plans emphasized the importance of a proper and cordial reception because they saw it as a precursor for a plebiscite that would bring forth the political will of a local populace. With all the celebration, much of the older generation was still terrified, though. Some even went into hiding from the Red Army or worse. However, since the Red Army's approach, characterized by restraint and selective action rather than indiscriminate violence, they managed to garner a measure of relief among the general population, specifically against the groups that were usually targeted, which include officers, policemen, landowners, etc. What's more is that Red Army soldiers, despite commands to the contrary, usually did engage with locals and establish some sort of cordial relationships. After the Red Army established control over the areas they occupied, they embarked on local governance, forced to maintain order, but also to help channel it towards the provisioning of the Red Army, arresting reactionary societal figures, preparing the elections that were upcoming. For the next 20 months, the region that the Soviets occupied experienced a heavy dose of electoral politics. There were three different elections, two of which were within the first six months of the occupation. The United States didn't bother to do that with half the places they occupy, and their explicit goal is apparently democracy. Anyways, I have relevant reading recommendations that you can check out here if you're interested in how the USSR worked and all that. Anyone who has a proper understanding of how the Soviet system worked isn't surprised by how the Soviets operated during the occupation as it relates to civil engagement and participation. Now, it should be clear as to why Western sources demonized the USSR and tried to put the Red Army in its conduct on par with the Nazis. The USSR stayed mostly true to their principles during the occupation of Poland. It should also be clear just how nonsensical the claim about the Soviets and Nazis conspiring to partition Poland is. Rather, the Soviet occupation of Poland could be seen as the Soviet's attempts to save as much of the Polish population from the violence of the Wehrmacht. Unsurprisingly, there are several reasons, and not all of which were altruistic. Despite that, the Red Army and the Soviets were generally preferred to that of the Wehrmacht and the Nazis, except for a select segment of anti-Semitic Polish people and Ukrainians of Poland who preferred the Nazis because Judeo-Bolsheviks and all that. Regardless, they were greeted warmly by the population, and even though not all were locally organized by enthusiastic supporters, the conduct of the local populace seems to indicate that most people saw them at a minimum as the lesser of two evils. Doesn't make everything they did right, but historical nuance is a interesting and fun thing to discuss. I look forward to random 14 year olds complaining in the comments because I didn't say Stalin ate Polish babies. And a final addendum, this one will just be a bit rambly. For the love of god, please don't misunderstand me. The Soviets made many, many mistakes in this. It would have been better that there be no pact, it would be better for them to have not occupied Poland, but if you were in the particular place and the particular industrialization level facing the same kind of danger, I don't know if you would have made better decisions particularly, especially when there was goodwill shown in the form of collective security with France and Britain, which would have prevented all this nonsense to begin with, or at least greatly affected it. <sighs> oh. Do you think the Soviet Union would have survived if they weren't so kleptocratic? I don't, there's so much more that they did wrong. Um, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know how the Soviet Union would survive. All right, we're going to get back to the world now as it exists currently. CNN asked Hamas official why group hasn't backed or hasn't agreed to U.S. back ceasefire proposal. Okay, right, and we're going to cover that. We're going to, we're going to cover that. Meanwhile, you can cover your eyes for the next three minutes. Uh, if you don't want to see the three minute break at the top of the hour, here's the three minute break now. By the way, the pier has broken again. I repeat, the pier has officially broken once more. Since the 7th of October last year, when Hamas militants streamed into Israel, killing hundreds and grabbing hostages, the war in Gaza has been an unrelenting nightmare of death and destruction. Talks to end the war are once again bogged down as every day the death toll mounts. In Beirut, we spoke to senior Hamas leader Osama Hamdan, one of the few privy to details of the ceasefire negotiations. But not privy, he claims, to the condition of the 120 hostages still in Gaza. How many are of those 120 are still alive? I don't have any idea about that. No one has any idea about this. The Wall Street Journal recently reported that messages from Gaza Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar to mediators and other Hamas officials included one in which he allegedly said the deaths of civilians in Gaza is a necessary sacrifice. Hamdan insists the messages were fake. After eight months of this war, more than 37,000 Palestinians have been killed, probably more, more than 80,000 injured, was it a necessary sacrifice for the people of Gaza? You, you seem that you uh, can't start from the beginning. Let's start from base number one. Why to, to talk about 
uh, the page of the 7th of October. What about the Israeli occupation? No, I'm talking about what came after yeah, the 7th exactly. of October. Well, the 7th of October was a reaction against the occupation. What came after that? It shows the real face of Israel. It shows how Israel is occupying the Palestinian lands, demolishing the situation of the Palestinians, killing the civilians. It's not the first time they are killing the civilians. But, I mean, Hamas is an organization. Does it regret what it did on the 7th of October, given what happened afterwards? We are living with this for the last 75 years as Palestinians. Dude, it is crazy. You got, like, an official fucking spokesperson. And it's like, it literally, you have an official spokesperson and like, you're doing the Piers Morgan questioning. That's so nutty. <laughs> Asking the fucking spokesperson of Hamas if he condemns Hamas is crazy work, bro. I swear to God. Like, what are we doing? What is going on? Bro, there's more press, there's more pressing matters, dude. Like, there's a ceasefire proposal. On, in the works. That's how they baited me into watching this. This is only possible with the Western mentality. It's a fucking cinema. I, I just like, I, I'm, a, I'm shocked, dude. Damn, this guy's good.